right and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you I'll be a living sanctuary for you Good morning we are glad that you are joining us today through our virtual service on Facebook and YouTube, or if you are listening at home through our audio recording. We hope that you are well and that you are safe as we continue to work through the current health crisis. Each week we have a Sunday service for you to view, and we will continue to do that each week until we are able to come back to Grace Church again. We will keep you updated with new developments through email and our post on Facebook. I remind you, if you have a pastoral need, please call me. Or you can contact the church office um, at, on weekdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. I want to remind you of the Grace Food Pantry that continues to take place on Wednesday nights. This happens at 5 o'clock on the church parking lot. There is a bag of non-perishable food as well as a bag sandwich type meal. Uh, and it is here for all who need. We encourage you to either walk up or drive up to receive your food. Uh, there is a limited supply though, so we encourage you to come as close to 5 o'clock as possible. And we encourage you to share this information with others who may help. I want to let you a little know a little bit about the re-entering program as we look to moving into phase one and, and down the road phase two of the recovery. I want to let you know that our bishop has given us some guidelines. And among those guidelines, I have been asked as the pastor to appoint a task force. That has happened and we are going to be meeting the beginning of next week. We will not be worshiping here at Grace until we know we can do so safely and to protect as many as want to attend. Uh, when we come back together, it's going to be different. I will tell you that. We are not going to go back to the way it was prior to the beginning of this pandemic. But I will let you know that if you follow on Facebook, if you check your emails, when those changes happen, we will let you know. And I will bring you an update each Sunday via our worship service. I thank you so much. Let us worship God in heart and spirit.
Please join us for our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Please join me for the collect for the day. O God, who came so richly in Jesus of Nazareth, grant that we may faithfully allow his abundant spirit to dwell in and through us so that your salvation may be made known to all your children. Hear our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and savior, amen. The gospel lesson can be found in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. Hear these words. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel hymn will be Christ is Alive.
Have you ever noticed how we tend to live in the future? I know I do that a lot. I have a friend, a dear friend in South Carolina, and we text each other a lot, especially around the Orioles and the Ravens. And over these past few years with the Orioles, it wasn't uncommon that after the first weekend of baseball season, I would text him and I would say, the bad news is the Orioles really stink. The good news is Ravens training camp is just four months away. And then when the Ravens are doing poorly, I'll text him and I'll say, the bad news is the Ravens look really bad. But the good news is spring training is just five months away. We have a tendency to live in the future, don't we? If you are expecting a child, you get excited and you're thinking and planning what life's going to be like once the child comes along. If you're planning on getting married, you get excited and think about what life's going to be like once you're married. I know over these past few years, I've found myself trying to hold back because I'm wondering what life is going to be like when I retire. And I also know that when I'm cold in the winter, I keep getting excited and thinking, a nice trip to Barbados is coming up really soon. We live in the future. But we also do that spiritually. We spend a lot of time trying to make sure we are going to get into heaven. And I hear it all the time, people making sure, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm going to get to heaven, I'm going to get to heaven. And, and it becomes this major goal at the end of the road. Sometimes we even joke when we're not doing so well. You know, I'm going to burn for saying that, but then we bring our friends with us. Have you noticed that? But I got a lot of buddies that are going to burn with me. We live in the future. It's interesting because the scripture that Jackie read, she actually read just two weeks ago. It was the Good Shepherd Sunday scripture where Jesus is talking about the sheep and the Good Shepherd. His point is that sheep live in the present. They know the Good Shepherd's voice. They trust the Good Shepherd. So they know that the Good Shepherd is going to lead them to green pastures, lead them to still waters, not down the road sometime, but now. They know that the Good Shepherd is going to protect them from the wolf when the wolf comes or some danger is looming. They also are very aware that sometimes the Good Shepherd isn't there and sometimes there's a hired hand. Sheep are more leery about the hired hand because they know if times get rough, the hired hand is going to leave. In the midst of that section, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. This idea of abundant life has been near and dear to my heart throughout my ministry. For 42 years, that's been the focus of how I understand living out this faith. The abundant life is so important because it focuses on the here and now, and it doesn't dwell in the future. But too many times we miss out on the abundant life because we're too busy getting prepared for the eternal life, that we don't experience the fullness of God's blessing in the here and now. I've thought about this over these past several days, because living the abundant life now is not the same as it was just a few months ago. You see, I'm used to living the abundant life in terms of community. And sometimes that abundant life hits me in places I don't really expect. When I think about abundant life, I I automatically think of volunteers and mission trip. Now, those of you who know me know that isn't something I always look forward to. And yet I can tell you my abundant life has been lived out a lot in Lumberton, North Carolina and in Oak Hill, West Virginia, and in Charleston, West Virginia, and in Boonville, New York. 
on volunteers and mission trips. When I think about abundant life, I think of the relationships that I've developed in churches over the years, people that remain near and dear to me. That's the abundant life. But we're now living this abundant life in the midst of a pandemic. We're living it in a stay-at-home society. We're living it where we can't even see the faces of people we're around because we're wearing masks. So I ask myself, what does the abundant life look like in the midst of a pandemic? And I came up with some ideas. First of all, it's important for us to remember that the abundant life is not rooted and grounded in feelings or emotions. I shared with you last week briefly a story. It's one I've told many times. When I was five years old, I was watching Lassie on a Sunday night at seven o'clock, the way I came on every week. And when Lassie was over, you know, and the dog lifts the paw up like this, you know, and I started to cry. I can still remember my dad picking me up, hugging me, taking me into the kitchen, sitting me on the table, the kitchen table, wiping away the tears and just saying, Bobby, it's okay. Lassie's going to come on again next Sunday, and you can watch it next Sunday. Somehow that made me feel better. Now, yeah, I was crying, so there were some emotions tied up in that. But it, it wasn't this spiritual experience. It was an assurance an awareness that my father was there and he was taking care of me. The sheep are not all spiritually charged because the good shepherd's there. They just go to the green pastures because that's where the shepherd is leading them and they trust the shepherd. They know that when danger lurks that it's going to be okay because the shepherd is going to take care of them. You see, it's that awareness, that assurance that gives us the abundant life. There are going to be times, especially today, when we are living through all kinds of struggles. Times when we are going to to wonder, how are we going to make it through to tomorrow? How are we going to make it through the rest of the day? Times when we are worried about whether we are sick and whether that illness is something greater than we we would want it to be. Times when we're tired of simply staying at home and want to get out of the house. That's when the assurance that God is there, that abundant life becomes so vital. We're not alone. We're not abandoned. God is with us. The second thing I want us to remember about the abundant life is it's eternal. I find it interesting that too many times we overlook the abundant life because we're too busy getting ready for eternal life. The truth is abundant life is eternal life, and eternal life is abundant life. So when we give up living out the abundant life today to make sure we're ready to go to heaven, we're giving up what we already have. We're not taking advantage of God's grace with us in the here and now. It's not like when we die, you're going to suddenly hear, okay, that's the end of eternal law, abundant life. Now let's move. It's eternal life now. It goes on and on forever and ever. The abundant life is eternal. And eternal life is abundant. They are one and the same. Which brings me to my final point about the abundant life, and that is it's not something we earn. It's not like I could go down my checklist and say, okay, I've done A, B, C, D, Now I can experience the abundant life. 
or, okay, now I'm ready to go to heaven. I've got them all checked off. That's not how it works. The abundant life, eternal life, is a gift. It's a gift from God. Paul said we are saved by by grace and not by works, so none of us can boast. I can't earn abundant life. You can't earn abundant life. No one can earn abundant life. It's a gift from God. Folks, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Let's not throw it away by living for tomorrow. Let's experience that abundant life today through the power and the presence of Jesus the Christ at work in our lives. Amen. Now I invite you to listen as our praise band, Only Grace, sings for us 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, O my soul.
we want to thank Only Grace for leading us in that, that music. Indeed, we enjoy hearing them every Sunday morning. So we take a few moments to go to God in prayer. I, I want us to continue to lift up all of those first responders, and as I shared with you last week, those final responders who are with people who are going through very tragic moments. May God give them grace uh, because their task is so vital and it can be so draining and difficult to see people struggling and suffering and to watch people die. So we pray for our first responders. We pray for our final responders. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, be with us as we journey through life. Especially be with us as we journey through these days of the COVID-19 pandemic. We lift up all those people who put their lives on the line each day so that we might be safe, so that we might be well so that we might be nourished. We pray, O oh God, for those people that stay with persons as they come to the end of life, who give them comfort, who remind them they're not alone. Indeed, Lord, in the midst of all the struggles, we pray that you would remind us of that life that comes from you that is abundant and is eternal. We pray today for our state, for our nation, for those who lead us. We pray that your loving and discerning spirit will touch them and fill them. That you would be with us as we discern our own way to safely re-enter the workplace as we discern our own understanding of how to re-enter worship. Guide us, O oh God. Help us to always see the value of each and every life that you have given to us. And help us never to do anything that puts any of those lives in danger. Be with those who are scared today. Scared because of their own health and well-being. Scared because of their income. Surround them with that assuring love and grace that lets them know they're not alone, that lets them know that your life, your abundant life, is there for them now and always. Guide us as a people of faith. Enable us to live and to be the church you've called us to be, loving and accepting all of your children, welcoming everyone. As we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I invite you to join now as we sing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
I want to thank you for your continued generosity. I know on Wednesday nights when I see people that are struggling and we give them a bag of groceries and we give them a meal and we give them other items that we have available at the time, it warms my heart to know that we're able to do this because of people like you. I thank those of you who continue to mail in your offerings, who drop them by the church, and I thank those of you who are giving online. Your gifts are making it possible for us to continue to reach out to this community in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to give. We thank you for the gifts that have been given, the gifts that will be given. Use them to touch and change lives. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of dedication is Hope of the World. I invite us to join together. Folks, we live in a world that's hurting. We live in a world that is aching right now. But we have a message to share, a message of life that's present in the very moment that we live, life that is abundant and life that lasts forever. 
The best way to share that message is to go forth seeking to live our lives in such a way that the world around us will see the Christ within us. Amen. I want to say a special word of thanks to our crew that continues to do this on a weekly basis. Today we welcome Chris Davis to that crew uh, who's leading us in music. Jackie, again, we thank you. Uh, Don, we thank you for the recording you're doing. And I want to just share with you my gratitude for Dennis Stewart who lines these services up and who is going to bless us at this very moment.